Okay, thank you very much for joining us today for the Social Media for Senior series. And today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most popular websites on the internet, but in some ways, one of the riskiest and dangerous, uh, one of the most dangerous ones I, I can say, but don't let that scare you uh, because there's a lot of value to be found on this particular platform. And I'm gonna be doing my best to walk you through the best practices on how to manage your experience with it and to have the experience that you want to have and perhaps to avoid some of the more upsetting elements of this website. Uh, if this is your first time viewing the Social Media for Seniors series, whether it's live or on the YouTube presentation, my name is Jesse and I'm a programming specialist librarian with the Dallas Public Library. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Reddit. So without further ado, we're, we're, we're going to go ahead and start this presentation. At the end of the PowerPoint, we will have a small uh, time for questions for the material that I brought up in the PowerPoint, but then we're going to switch over for about 15 to 20 minutes to have a demo of what it's like to actually use uh, Reddit with an active account. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, but before we uh, talk about what the website Reddit is, I do wanna cover some of the general rules of thumb for navigating the internet in any capacity. And this is just a good set of policies to use for any particular website, no matter where you go. Um, no, rule number one is always avoid being too personal uh, because any information that is particularly close to you can be used against you in the wrong hands. So with that in mind, I would never recommend sharing your address, birth date, social security number, email, phone number, or anything like that uh, in the public domain. Um, or anywhere that uh, members of the public can see it. The next thing I want to mention is that the internet is forever. Even if you delete a photo, comment, or an account of something, you should go ahead and assume that there is going to be some kind of a record of that content existing previously. Sometimes this can be done through screen sh uh, screenshots or screen captures or uh, archived versions of a website. So always be mindful of what you post and where you go especially on Reddit. Now, the, on that very phrase, especially on Reddit, the, that is something I want to highlight with the third point. The internet is dark and full of liars. No matter where you go, there's probably going to be some sort of, uh, and I, when I say where you go, I mean the entire internet, not just Reddit, but there's a huge myriad of scams, hoaxes, fake accounts, misinformation, disinformation, and other threats to you and your online security. That being said, if you know what to look for, you can spot them and avoid them. And the final two aspects I want to bring up are about which, uh, your experience with, with uh, the internet in general, is that you cannot control what other people post. And this is especially true with Reddit. The only things that you can control on the internet is what you bring to it, who sees your content, and what you choose to consume. And the final attribute is there is a price. While social media websites like Instagram, Facebook, and almost all the other major social media platforms are free to use, they, there is a price insofar as they can track your activity from other uh, places that you go to online in order to show you ads and products that may appeal to you. And you'll be seeing that in the live demonstration of the Reddit website here in about 20 minutes or so. And Reddit will be featuring plenty of ads throughout. Now with those general rules of thumb out of the way, what exactly is Reddit? The way that they market themselves is the front page of the internet. So uh, with the uh, newspapers that are thankfully still around today, what they usually do is just have all of the most important information to the general user available on that front page of the newspaper. Whereas there's the various headlines, which is the most important news story of the day, as well as other information like expected weather and, and uh, major events. And Reddit as a whole is a website as well as an application. And it's one part news aggregator one part social forum, and another part a content rating system. And users log on to create, post, vote on, and reply to different content that has been uploaded to the site. Now, what I mean by content is it can be text posts, 
text posts rather that a user has written out or pictures or video or links to other websites that users can talk about and, uh, and uh, their comments can be voted on as well. Reddit has existed since 2005 and over the past 16 years, it has become one of the largest and most frequently visited websites in the entire world, but especially in the United States, that's where it gets most of its traffic and its content uploaded from, but it is viewed all around the world. And this and the website itself is a wildly successful business endeavor because it is currently valued at $10 billion. When I last uh, saw their evaluation from, I believe it was Fidelity. Now, who uses Reddit? Well, every day Reddit advertises that they actually have 52 million people using it daily. And with uh, stats like that, that means they're the 10th largest social media networking site. That puts them in a very distant uh, place behind YouTube and Facebook, which had even more. And as far as their user demographics, there is a, a noticeable heavy emphasis on, um, not, I should, emphasis is the wrong word. The user base is noticeably uh, composed of more men than there is women with a 62 to 38% or just about that. And that's the division. And Statista uh, is where I got that particular uh, statistic from. And then <clears throat> they also say that at 52% of the respondents to their survey say that they use Reddit every day and 82% of the Reddit users use it at least once a week and 95% of them say that they use it monthly. And most users report being between the ages of 25 through 29. So it's uh, with that in mind, you, it's easy to, to see that Reddit's uh, content comes from uh, older 20, old, older 20 somethings, and most of them are men, but there is a very strong concentration of women on there. Next uh, is the details about making an account there. Reddit is available as both, it's available in two formats, I should say, both on the website, like I mentioned, and an application on both iOS and Android. And the sign up sim uh, process is very similar for both of those formats, but there are some key differences. <clears throat> and there is only one age requirement with it where you have to be at least 13 years old to make an account. So. There can be some uh, view users on there that are even younger than 18 and by a noticeable difference. Um, but signing up is still very easy because you can sign up with an email address as well as your Apple ID or Google account. Now, if you choose one of the latter options, Apple ID or Google, uh, they'll uh, give you just a random username and you have 30 days to change it before it becomes permanent. You can, however, have multiple accounts. In fact, I do myself. I have my own personal Reddit account, and I have the one that I've made specifically for the purposes of this presentation. And we'll be uh, explaining about that one here in just a minute. But a lot of people refer to their backup Reddit accounts as throwaways because they don't necessarily want everyone to know what they're looking at at any given time. And there are plenty of legitimate reasons for that. And Reddit is a bit different than some of the other uh, platforms like say uh, Facebook or Twitter where Facebook will hardly let you do anything if you're not logged into an active Facebook account. But Reddit will still allow you to see just about anything, but you're not gonna be allowed to post, comment, or upvote or downvote on any sort of content unless you are logged in. And I'm going to go so far as to say that if you are going to choose to do uh, to be active on Reddit in any capacity, I'd highly recommend that you do so by making an account because that gives you a greater amount of control over your own experience and you get to design your feed. Because if you don't have an account, it's just going to give you whatever is popular and that may not always be a good thing. Now that it comes to the next question, what can I find on Reddit? It boils down to two answers. Anything and everything. The good thing about Reddit is that you can find just about anything you'd want. But that is also the bad thing about Reddit because you can find just about anything on there. But you're probably going, okay, Jesse, seriously, what is not allowed on that site? 
I am not exaggerating on the range of potential content on Reddit because it can go from the thing from some of the most pure, wholesome, and uplifting content that you can possibly find on the internet, as well as the absolute worst and most upsetting. That being said, much like uh, with laws about speech, there are some limits to what Reddit as a platform will allow to take place on their website. And most of these are pretty reasonable. And I have, the, and these come directly from their content policy. I've read, I lifted it from there, uh, it's myself. So one of the first sets of things is they will not allow any harassment, bullying, or making any kinds of threats uh, towards another user or inciting violence against them or making campaigns of hate based on identity or vulnerability. That has been a problem in the past, but as a platform, they've been doing their best to try to uh, prevent that from happening. It's difficult, though, because people are going to be people. The next major category they have is they will not allow posting or threatening of anyone's personal information, otherwise known as doxing, and they will especially not allow any suggestive or sexually explicit materials of someone without their permission, and even more especially than that is minors. You may not post or ask someone else to post any suggestive or sexually explicit content involving minors. Notice the last bit of that clause. That means that there, it is allowed for you to upload a content of nudity or sexuality, provided it's yourself. That is something that Reddit allows, and a lot of people will actually go to Reddit for that particular reason, and that is the case. They have done their best, though, to make sure that they prevent the more malicious versions of that. And they have, and they can, and they likely will again, enforce those sorts of rules, and they will ban users as well as whole communities for breaking those rules. I won't go through the entire history of the more problematic communities and subreddits that they have banned. A lot of them have, in my opinion, deserve to be banned and should not be allowed to use that platform. I've seen in a content that is extreme in every different into direction being banned. And, and there's a lot of variations where uh, examples I can think of, I can say that I'm like, yeah, if I were in Reddit's shoes, I wouldn't want to see this either. Now, with that being the case, we're going to go ahead and switch our gears back towards the key terminology that you're going to want to know about if you're er, wanting to work on Reddit in any capacity. The first set of terms we're going to be talking about is a subreddit or username. The username is more or less exactly what it sounds like. Whenever you sign up, like I mentioned, you get the ability to choose a online pseudonym or a nom de plume if you're French to browse, post, and comment. And the username will come with its own profile. Not unlike your Facebook account, but it's very different. I'll be showing more why in the demonstration. And this will be shown with in the code as like reddit.com slash you slash whatever your new username happens to be. For example, the name that I chose for this demo account I made for our presentation today is Guybrarian Demo. And in order to find that, you could go to reddit.com slash you slash Guybrarian Demo. But you don't necessarily need to do that beyond this presentation because like I mentioned at the outside, this is going to be a throwaway account. So I'm not going to be interacting with it any further than this presentation itself. Now, the other term is a subreddit. Uh, the subreddit is the original term for a community. That's the uh, community is the newer term that they're trying to apply to that. And it's a, a subsection of the reddit.com, which is revolving around one thing or one different idea. And it's signified by r slash whatever the name of the community happens to be. So there's r slash relationships, r slash awe, r slash books, etc. It goes from there. Now, the next things we're going to be talking about are karma and awards. And the two, the, what these two have in common is it's a way for you to get rewarded for interacting on Reddit. Karma comes from reddit.com itself because the algorithm, the complex mathematical formula that helps power the website is going to be rewarding the users of Reddit uh, for providing popular content. And it gives you this in what's called karma, which some people just call as fake internet points because there's no real way to use them. 
uh, there's been a joke that's been the I've heard before, like, what is karma used for? That's a great question. With a heavy silence, because there isn't really an answer. It's it's kind of just bragging points, but it also can be viewed as credibility. Like, oh, if someone has like 33,000 uh, points of karma, that means they're on Reddit a lot and providing a lot of different content and talking to people. Whereas the demo account that I have here only has one karma, and that's just for me logging on. I haven't posted or, or uh, replied or commented on anything just yet. And the karma will be displayed on a user's profile. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the awards are also a form of recognition for good contributions to Reddit. But as a different, as opposed to karma, where it comes from Reddit itself, awards are given by other users. And there's a different uh, set of uh, categories for this. Uh, the oldest one is called medals, where these are much like the Olympic medals. It's rewarded for us. Uh, uh, it's a, that's a, like they are, they come in like the medals that Olympic, like that come as prizes from the Olympics. Good Lord, I just could not say that sentence. Like the most common are silver, gold, and platinum. There are two uh, different kinds of medals with ridiculously silly names. Like uh, there's Argentium, but then there's this other one with a much more complicated name and it is so expensive that it's not even really worth the time talking about. Another group of awards they also feature is called reactions. And this is more or less self-explanatory. It's given to show a reader's reaction to a post. So. There's a wholesome award, a hug award, as in I would like to give you a hug after reading this, or a spit take if it makes you laugh. And there's a lot of other examples as well. And other uh, sets of awards can be tailored towards a given community. And there are some awards that are only available to people who have Reddit premium accounts, which means that they're actually paying even more money. And I should mention that awards are um, given and, and uh, purchased through Reddit coins, which is a website uh, currency that you can buy for uh, buy with uh, real money. I don't do that in my uh, personal account, and uh, that's entirely up to you if you want to do that. Uh, it's like if if you get a gold award, for instance, that means that someone especially valued your post and spent money in order to be able to tell you so. Now, with that that we're gonna go ahead and move over here to two terms for people in a position of authority on Reddit. And those are admin and mod. And mod is of course short for moderator. Now I do have admin listed up on the top here, but I wanna talk about the moderator first. A moderator is a Reddit user that runs a subreddit. So if you create a subreddit or a community as they're trying to call it now, you can become a moderator by default. And a mod can set up new rules for this new community, and they can make new moderators by adding new users to the moderating team. And a moderator has a great amount of control over that community. They can approve or reject posts. Uh, they can uh, delete posts if they break Reddit, con Reddit or Reddit it's a content policy, as well as banning users that don't conform to those. And another example would be Oh, I'm sorry, I got off the subject right there. The admin is very different, but has some overlap, is an, ad, an administrator, that's what admin is short for, is a paid employee of Reddit that helps to run the site. Their job involves managing a lot of the technical aspects of the you know, website, like managing the code, preventing spam, and other forms of fraudulent content, like people trying to get money from moderating a, a a subreddit or a community that is against their rules so if someone is saying you can join this community but only if you pay me money you should contact an administrator because that is not allowed they also an admin also has the authority to make changes across the entire site and they can ban users or communities if they don't conform to reddit's site-wide rules and policies like the reddit content policy or if a bunch of moderators are not emphasizing proper Reddit itself. Okay, and the final uh, term that I'm actually going to talk about here is called Flare. And there's actually two different versions of this, which it's a kind of tag really. And when you, 
uh, the link flare is one of the ones that you're probably going to be interacting with more often. And that is an optional tag you can use to help categorize what kind of post you're making on a given subreddit. So an easy example would be if you're posting on the subreddit relationships, you can use the dating flare if the post you are making is talking about something you are experiencing with you, you and your significant other. But you can give it a different flair if you're talking about a different sort of relationship or relationship problem. Now, a user flair is different from a link flair because that's something that can be more communal. And it's a tag you can give your username uh, on a subreddit. And it can come with custom images, text, or both. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, a good example I have of a user flair is one of my favorite Ida subreddits that I like to go to a lot on my personal account is Red Dead Redemption. That's my favorite video game series. And on that subreddit, users can choose user flair to reflect different characters in the video games itself, like uh, Arthur Morgan, Dutch Vanderlyn, and so on. Now, one other set of things that I feel it's extremely important for me to mention before we go any further in the presentation or the demonstration itself is the kinds of content warnings you can get. Because like I mentioned, you can find just about anything on Reddit. And, and thankfully, there are some uh, short, uh, shorthand words and phrases that you can see in order to know whether or not you should proceed any further or if you should run the other way. Now, the three terms you really want to know are SFW, NSFW, or the worst of them, NSFL. Now, safe for work means you aren't going to get in trouble for uh, being, uh, like, it's usually more wholesome. It's uh, inoffensive material that is going to be perfectly fine. But, but not safe for work means it may not be suitable for public or professional viewing or it may not be suitable for uh, people of different ages. So if you see that kind of tag, it could mean that the content involves nudity, sexuality, or violence. And I'm not going to lie, this is a very common set of, of a, it's a very common tag that you can find across a whole bunch of different subreddits, even the ones that are usually more safe for work. That being said, they will tag an actual post or a community itself so that you can know, oh, this is not something I want to go to because Reddit itself works kind of like a giant city with a bunch of different uh, subreddits forming different neighborhoods. And there are just like there's neighborhoods in every city that you may not want to go to. There may be some subreddits that you don't want to go to. And the but the one, like, so NSFW is a red flag that you should pay attention to if you don't want to see that kind of material. But that, like I mentioned, and if NSFW is a red flag, then NSFL is a black flag because that refers to not safe for life. And that, <clears throat> that's the content you really, really want to avoid because you may end up being very disturbed by what you see when you go to this location and it can and it's usually the worst of the worst which uh, includes death extreme violence gore things like that thankfully that sort of tag is not as common but uh, that is a tag that you can see out in the wild and as you're going on there and personally i have no desire to see any nsfl tags because that's not the experience i want to have when i'm uh, just browsing the internet or anything like that. So I do feel it's important to just know the distinction between those. And of course, we will not be focusing on any of the not safe for work tangents because, well, I'm at work. This is my job. So I do not want to get in trouble with the city of Dallas for anything I show you today on this platform. Now, that being the case, how are you going to know about what sort of content is or isn't uh, not safe for work? Well, thankfully, most of the time, there's uh, the communities and subreddits try to choose a name that accurately reflects their content and their subject matter. However, that isn't always the case. And I'll give you a great example without giving you a great example, because there's one particular subreddit out there with a very infamous misleading name. One would think that it was a good place for arboreal enthusiasts, but in reality, it focuses on cannabis. And 
since I am an employee of the city of Dallas and where cannabis is illegal in Texas, I will not be telling you the name of this subreddit. So just don't bother asking me. Uh, now on that other side of the coin, uh, that one is a, one where a name is misleading it, for a bit more of a mischievous reason. There's other, there, the, other, the flip side is where the subreddit itself is perfectly fine. There's, uh, the content itself is good, but they may have chosen a name that is either impolite, profane, or just downright inappropriate. And I have some examples on the screen that are censored. So there's nature is blanking metal or interesting as blank. These are perfectly good subreddits, although I would caution the first one because that it can show uh, uh, violence in nature and not everybody wants to see that. Um, but then there's the other sort of categories where they put like, and this just shows somewhat of the immaturity of some Reddit users where they put porn in the actual title, even though the content involved has nothing to do with actual pornography. So a good example of that would be food porn or map porn. And in fact, there's one particular subreddit I will be showing in the demonstration part of the presentation where it revolves around some of the most beautiful natural landscape photography that you're ever going to see, but the moderators had given it the title Earth Porn. So it sounds worse than it really is. Now, with that being the case, we're gonna go ahead and quickly go through some valuable communities that I think that anybody who uses Reddit would be well served to take a look at. They're either popular, they, all of them are popular, well-moderated communities where the moderators are doing their jobs and they're not sneaking in uh, different types of content and they're following all the good rules. And they feature content that is either wholesome or useful. And I have them more or less in an alphabetical order, but that's about it. The first one I'm going to talk about is a particularly large one called Ask Reddit, where this is essentially polling all of the users of Reddit on various questions. But I should mention it does feature questions that can be safe for work as well as not safe for work. So you should be aware of that. Now, I think my, yeah, there's my cursor. What I want to highlight right here is there's the subreddit name itself. So if you wanted to navigate to it directly, you would go to reddit.com slash ask Reddit. And as we can see here from this screenshot, it's got it's very popular with over 34 million users, which makes it one of the most popular subreddits by number of subscribers. And it the most the post here that's highlighted is which movie have you seen more than seven times? And it has 35,000 different comments on that particular thread. And these little icons right here next to the statement of the timestamp, these are the different awards. So each one of, of these numbers right here shows how many times that type of award has been given to an individual post. This one right here that's uh, grayish colored and labeled with an S is a silver award. And the one here with the uh, seal is the wholesome award. The next one is r slash awe. And I just love this particular subreddit. It's one of my favorites. And again, this is one of the more popular subreddits on the AO website. And how can it not be? I mean, look at my little guy right there. Like, how can you look at that a picture of the puppy dog right there and just not smile? It, it, I wish I could just have that as my background on my laptop. It, it just makes me happy. Another one that is pretty self-explanatory is r slash books. And what a surprise, the professional librarian likes to hang out on the, the uh, subreddit about books. And now another one that I wouldn't recommend, is, oh goodness, it's my screen seemed to go black right there. I don't know what happened. So let's go ahead and see what's going on there. All right, there we go. Am I still on screen? Yes. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, we're, we're going to go ahead and resume here, uh, but we're just going to uh, go with the PowerPoint view from here. So r slash Dallas, someone had created a you know, subreddit for the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, but there are subreddits for each of the major cities in our lovely Metroplex. So Dallas focuses 
um, in the Dallas area itself. And it's not to be confused with r slash downtown Dallas, which is even more specific, or the other major cities, but this is a good hub of information for residents of our great city. And it actually helps out with a lot of the information spreading, like for instance, like activities that are going on from the 6th through the 12th, as well as uh, people making posts that are of general information and news towards the residents. And we'll take another look at that later. Now, one other subreddit that I've mentioned several times in the course of this presentation is called r slash relationships, which is, of course, a forum for users to share issues or conflicts with people in their lives and seek advice and insight from other users that are online. And here's an, a very good example of Flare, because each one of these little tags on this screen is a different Flare for one of the subcategories of relationships. So there's dating, how to deal with breakups, non-romantic uh, relationship issues or infidelity or personal issues. And each one of these has their own you know, different rules. So for, partic my, so for uh, relationships, they try to have the users identify age and gender. So it could be either like male 34, like in this first one or female 36 or um, just for whatever re the example, 19 non-binary, if they choose not to identify as male or female. So with that being in the case, we're going to go ahead and move on to some of the other useful subreddits that it are also very popular. This one is called r slash IMA, and AMA also stands for Ask Me Anything. And this one is devoted towards, like this, uh, this one is where professionals of various fields devote their time to answering questions from Reddit within a given stretch of time, usually in like a live stream event where they, they just sit down and talk to the users of Reddit. This can be celebrities uh, plugging a book or a movie, or in this particular case, it can be the authors of the book, the upcoming book, Out of Office, The Big Problem and Bigger Problems of Working Remotely. And one of the final ones I'll include in this particular presentation, uh, but trust me, I'm going to highlight a lot more when we get to the demonstration portion here in just a second, is r slash science. I especially like this because, well, I have an information science degree myself, which is certainly very different from an astronomy degree or anything like that. But I really like this subreddit because it is a community curated by professional scientists that cover many different scientific disciplines. All of the posts are supposed to be uploaded from trustworthy science-based outlets for people to discuss new re research that's been uh, published, as well as the implications thereof. And as you can see, there's different subcategories on that community for like the physical sciences, the life sciences, social sciences, and it goes onwards. All right, so we actually ended up taking longer on the uh, PowerPoint here than I expected. So we'll take a few minutes to uh, uh, answer any questions that you may have after the first uh, uh, part of this presentation. And then we're going to switch over into actually going live on Reddit itself. But don't let my talk of all of the dangerous subreddits that I've mentioned earlier scare you because I have made this uh, Guybrarian demo account as wholesome and useful as I can possibly do so. And I assure you, no I'm not safe for work content will be shown and, um, if I can help it on this particular feed or anything we navigate to. So with that being the case, I'm going to take a sip of water and feel free to ask me any and all questions you may have at this point in the presentation. I'll get my uh, pen and paper out here to write down anything in case I don't know the answer and can follow up with you later. I have only encountered Reddit when I search on Google for some information. I've never gone to the website. So if okay. I find something, will it, autom will it tell me right away if it is um, NSFW material or not before I get on it? Yes, it should do so if it is, in fact, an NSFW sub, uh, subreddit, like uh, someone in, or an entire community revolving around material that may be more upsetting. There should be some sort of an age gate uh, saying like, hey, you should know that this is NSFW material. 
but like I said, sometimes in the names, they won't say that. But if you navigate to that and you're not aware that it's NSFW, they will actually put up a disclaimer page to let you know that. Okay. Or at least they should if the moderators are doing their job. Good. Well, the their volunteer question. job, I should say. <laughs> right. One other question. What mm -hmm. is spit take? Oh, spit take is in like uh, the old movies where like someone laughs so hard they spit water. Like that's what that particular award is meant oh, to be. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're quite welcome. Perhaps that might not have been the best example, but I can understand why you would be a little concerned given everything that I've talked about that Reddit does allow. Great. This is Shivran. Okay, Shivran. Um, you mentioned in your account, you said you made the account safe. How does, I did, the person, yeah. uh, how does the person do that? If, when I start the account, if I want to make sure it is safe. Well, are there some be, Okay, I'll be showing you a little bit some, more how to do that in the demonstration in just a moment. That is fine, thank you. Okay. All right, any other questions before we begin the next phase of the uh, presentation today? <laughs> I'll go ahead and just uh, navigate to the actual website right here. Excuse me. Okay, at the moment, it sounds like there's no questions thus far, which I'm glad to have answered the questions I did have earlier. But if you do have any further questions, uh, you can go ahead and put them in the chat and later I can have Matthew read them to me. But with that being the case, we're going to go ahead and try to make good use of the remaining 15 minutes of our presentation. And we're going to talk about Reddit itself. Now, this here is just plain old reddit.com, as you can see in the search bar. And this is going to be the feed that uh, Reddit provides to me uh, with my demo account right here, uh, trying to show me content that they think that I will find interesting. We're going to go ahead and talk about the uh, top bar up here first. Now, this little uh, robot-looking guy, uh, that is Snoo. He is Reddit's mascot and their registered trademark. Uh, there's debate about whether he's an alien or a robot, but he looks like a robot to me with a broken antenna, so that's why I called him that. Uh, but if you click that particular button, it will just take you to your normal Reddit feed. Whereas here, this uh, quick navigation bar, shows the subreddits that I am currently subscribed to uh, with this account. Now, this first one right here is r slash announcements. And this one is the largest subreddit on the entire website because it's owned by Reddit itself. And this is how they provide their users major announcements for uh, things that are they feel that users should know about, like uh, changes in policy, for instance. And I have a bunch of different subreddits that I have already chosen to subscribe to here. And like I had mentioned, I took good care to make sure that all of these were as good as uh, could make them and are probably not going to have anything that would upset us too much. Now, I've got Ask Reddit. I have r slash awe, which, like I mentioned, is just full of the cuteness. One of my personal favorite uh, subreddits is called Data is Beautiful, which is about data in, uh, visualization. But I'm not going to go through each and every one of them right here. But if you are particularly uh, invested in one of them, you can just click the star button right here to know that this is just one of your favorite places. And we're going to go ahead and do that one. This is how I can create a post here. So I can, I can have it be a text post and type it out here with various formatting buttons. There's a link button for if I'm just sharing a post from, say, like the Associated Press or a cool blog that I found and want to share with people. That's how I would go about that. And there is a button there for polling, but uh, that's only available in certain times and places. But you also need to choose the community to post into. So if well, one of the things I was curious of uh, about this presentation was I wondered if I should actually post a uh, 
the question, hey, uh, Reddit, I am going to be teaching seniors about how to use Reddit uh, this week. Uh, what do you recommend that I highlight? I, I didn't decide on doing that because like I mentioned, uh, there's a lot of different people on Reddit and I do feel that they wouldn't take it seriously and they would probably just flood it with a bunch of things to just be upsetting. So I decided not to do that. Now we're going to go ahead and continue on with the search bar. Oh, and there, as you see right here, this is how I can flag a post that I make as not safe for work. And there's different flares that I can add to it. So if I wanted to talk about a relationship that I'm currently going through, uh, flare should be enabled there, but I should probably have some text at first. But we're going to go ahead and continue on. And these other buttons right here are also useful. So this right here is for the popular uh, forms of content, which I, reckon, I would recommend caution because just because it's popular doesn't mean you're going to like it. Uh, this is going to be all where you can actually explore different subreddits and find new uh, communities to join and receive content from for your Reddit feed. This here is Reddit Live, which I haven't interacted too much with, so I'm not going to go in depth on. This one here that looks like the Facebook Messenger icon is exactly that. It's the uh, chat system where you can talk to other users of Reddit directly. Um, and this bell icon is the notification one where it will let you know of uh, replies that you have made to a post as well as comments and just how popular your posts have become. The plus icon is another way that you can actually create a post. Now, this gold button right here is how you can acquire Reddit coins. And that is how you can give awards. Now, this one, their advertising is free, and they have their pricing schedule for various amounts of coins right here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and claim this one, and we're going to open it. All right, so that award we can see right here is the helpful award. And they, what's different about this sort of free award as opposed to some of the ones that people can purchase with the coins that they use with real money is that this one has a time limit. I don't know if we'll actually use this one within the course of the presentation, but it could be useful. And then this here is the button for the Gibrarian demo account itself. And I'm going to take a bit of time to look at this. I'm going to go ahead and discard this post, but before I do navigate away, you can notice that after I clicked this button and decided I wanted to post in r slash relationships, it navigated me uh, towards the subreddit itself, where it's a brief description of the uh, community itself, how old it is. And each one of these uh, little numbers right here refers to one of the different rules that they have. And I mentioned Reddit often, and that is more or less the set of uh, rules that they recommend that you use when you're interacting with different users, like remembering the human. But I am running out of time here, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, I didn't want to save the draft. But this is just showing more about the actual profile itself. Like I said, I haven't made any posts or made any comments, but I have been browsing through these safe for work um, these safe for work uh, subreddits. So I have plenty of uh, things that I have saved. So a lot of these are especially uh, wholesome and they also will show where the subreddit, where I got them from, I should say. So let's take a look at this most recent one I found. Now this comes from Data is Beautiful, the one that I had mentioned earlier. And it has a graph uh, that someone had uploaded uh, saying in about how sharply homelessness has declined in Japan with the, the difference of the numbers of people experiencing homelessness from 2007 up to 2020. And I particularly liked this one. And we can see just how popular it is with this right here, with 56,000 points of karma, which means that um, it's been uh, it's been popular in a good sense. So, and these little arrows are how you uh, decide uh, on content. So the upvote means you enjoyed it. The downvote means you didn't enjoy that and you don't think that it should be highlighted. 
Another example here from r slash made me smile it, uh, is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, again, how can you just not love that little guy? Like, like he's so cute. And each one of these will have another button. So like it'll allow you to see the comments or expand the post itself. We can give an award, we can share it to, by sharing, we can get the link to send it to someone else or post it to a different community. And there's the button to unsave and remove it from this little cache of links that I have enjoyed. And But you can re also report something if you think it's um, uh, breaking content rules or things like that. Or you can just click the hide button saying, I don't want to see this. And I haven't hidden any posts that I have uh, come across just yet on this account. And as I mentioned, I made sure that all of these, uh, some of these are videos. So it looks like it's not wanting to play right here, but this is just a video of a kitten. Ah, there we go. Now it's firing up of a kitten receiving the massages. And yeah, like r slash made me smile is another great place to go uh, where if you just need a nice little flush of positivity. And thankfully, uh, oh, you can un uh, save not just entire posts like these are, but you can save comments as well. So with this particular one, oh, and I should it, uh, go ahead and highlight this. There is going to be a little profanity when I uh, scroll up, but I am just uh, showing you this live. This is not me saying it, but this was a particular post that is uh, infamous on Reddit because it was on the community of revolving around grilled cheese and it was just a guy going on a rant about uh, how everyone on there was not actually posting about cheese, gr well, grilled cheese sandwiches, but it was actually a bunch of melts right here. And uh, it's particularly uh, beloved because the dude just takes it way too seriously. But the profanity is his username because like I said, you can choose any username as long as it's not chosen by somebody else. And uh, this person uh, chose to have theirs with a little bit of profanity in their username. So that's not cool. But meanwhile, I wanted to highlight this particular saved comment right here because it shows a lot of, as you can see, it, it's very popular because it has 11 points of, 11,000 points, I should say, of karma. And it was made about eight years ago in 2013. And it has hundreds upon hundreds of awards. And this was posted on r slash get disciplined. Uh, this particular user here, the original poster who'd made that, was going through a really bad time. And this other user, Ryan's01, posted this set of rules on of her self-improvement. And they were remarkably good. And it has been rewarded with both high karma and hundreds of awards. And if we navigated towards the actual post here itself, uh, some awards like this one get especially highlighted and shown to different people. And ooh, we're really running uh, short on time here. Uh, so each one of these is a different award. And we can click that to see all of the various awards that this one has been given. But since we just want to use that helpful one that I've mentioned, I, wait, there we go, free. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say like, this was a helpful comment because I genuinely believe that. It's too long for us to go over here, right here, but it's a, each one of these rules uh, is a great set of uh, thoughts and practices to have for self-improvement and it's, it's really good. I wish that I could actually uh, have this one. If I believed in tattoos, this might be uh, something good. Maybe not the entire thing. That would really hurt. But the rules themselves, like on, on, on an arm or something like that. But like I said, I don't really believe in tattoos. So that's besides the point. Okay, so we ended up taking a little bit more on the PowerPoint presentation itself than I had otherwise expected. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the question session a little bit early, even though I've only had a very short uh, uh, demonstration of the actual one right here. But as I am uh, navigating away, I'm just gonna show you an example of the feed right here. So to answer Shivran's question earlier about how you uh, choose your content, 
uh, there are places like you can see, like if you all here and just see the different subreddits and you can take a look through them. And if you find that they are valuable, you can just choose to join them by clicking these buttons available. And you can also curate your own uh, feeds, whether it's on a subreddit or in your own personal feed by with these buttons up here. The best refers to ones that have high karma and usually get awards. Hot means that they're popular right now. New means that they are the most recently uploaded chronological material. And the top allows you to see the given, like the most popular stuff, not just now, but uh, this week, this month, or other particular times too. But this is my general uh, YouTube, uh, my Reddit feed right here. So uh, there's not much of a point for me to do that. But if I were to go to other places, I could see like the most popular posts of all time. But so with the uh, new ones right here, and if I were to go to r slash Dallas uh, and, and search by new, I would be able to have a lot of photos uploaded of the gorgeous sunset last night, like because someone else had posted about like, oh, there were so many of them. They were very sarcastic, like that's two, three, four. Now, but here's an example of uh, finding content that you may not hit enjoy uh, that is in a safe for work place. Like, so there's a bit of news right here with the crime flare. So someone who'd killed a dog has been sentenced to 6.5 years in prison. And I'm a dog person, so that upsets me, but it, uh, it's different from the sorts of content that I mentioned earlier. So this is just a news article. We can see that it comes from WFAA.com. Okay. Um, I know we've actually got, it's about to be four o'clock, but I think we can go ahead and expand for a few more minutes to allow for more questions. So uh, I'll go ahead is, and zip my lip. Great. This is Shivrin. When yes, you Shivrin. were creating the message, you had the option to classify it uh, like an, 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 uh, you, you could classify as that not to be seen by younger people or something. Yes. But that means on your honor system. You're right. That is on my honor. Right. So nobody, um, so in other words, it could be the, uh, it could be not classified properly if those people are not honest. Yes, that is a, a risk that can happen with Reddit. That being said, moderators will um, uh, do their best to make sure that if uh, they will review posts that are uploaded and if they don't conform to those sorts of rules, then they can either they take that down. So the moderators are kind of like uh, civilian watchdogs to try and make sure that that sort of thing doesn't happen because ultimately they want their communities to grow. Great. My one more question. When you, uh, if you had created that um, message can you post it on two or three different uh, subreddits? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, that's called cross-posting. And you can uh, do that by even with posts that are not your own. But you can post uh, uh, something in multiple subreddits, yes. Great. I uh, thank you for your time. It was very good. Okay. Thank I'm glad that you enjoyed this, Shivran. I'm always glad that you uh, show up to these events and you always ask good questions that I probably should have thought of myself. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions from the attendees today? Uh, I just had a question. I know you had given us the web page with the Instagram and all those things you have done before. Could you give us that page, please? Uh, the page previous, for Reddit itself? In the previous uh, presentations you have done. Oh, yes, I can go ahead and mention that we have uploaded the previous uh, uh, presentations that we've done in the social media for seniors page to the YouTube account owned by the Dallas Public Library. So if you go to Dallas Public Library uh, on YouTube, you'll be able to find the playlist for social media for seniors, where I have done different events on teaching about different uh, social media platforms. The three that I've done previously are Instagram, Pinterest, and Goodreads. I try to do these monthly, um, so with, this is just the most recent one. One of our uh, other attendees for one of those events, Steve, had uh, thrown the idea of me doing Reddit here, 
And after some thinking, I thought it was worth a shot because it is a it's a tool much like anything else. It's as good as people use it. And and uh, I thought it was a worthy view. But if you're interested in looking at any of the other uh, videos that we've uploaded, YouTube is the place to go. Thank you. OK, so Shivran's had uh, several good questions, so I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen right here. D does anyone else have any uh, questions for or me about Reddit or social media in general or anything like that? Uh, no more questions here. Are okay. you planning any other new ones? I didn't see yes, the Pinterest. Haven't. I did see the Instagram and the Goodreads, but I didn't see the Pinterest. Are you okay. planning? Well, thank you for letting me know about that. Yeah. So to answer the question, yes, we will be continuing the social media for a series, uh, social media for seniors series in 2022. And we're going to be just uh, deciding which ones to go with next. Uh, some of my uh, colleagues have twisted my arm and eventually I'm going to have to get a TikTok so that I can uh, do that. <laughs> but that's one where I have been in a very reticent to do that because as a millennial, I think like the TikTok thing is more for Zoomers than anything else. That That's the generation that follows mine. And and I've and this just shows that I'm getting older because I didn't want to get a, a TikTok or anything. But that is going to be one of the ones that I will probably cover eventually. And I have put off doing Facebook and Twitter, uh, but eventually I will be doing them as well. And probably YouTube, too, just because uh, behind Facebook that or I think it's Facebook and YouTube are the two biggest ones uh, by a wide margin. I just don't remember which one is at first or second at a given time. Hmm. Okay, thank you. I'll watch for them. Okay, thank you very much, Karen. I think Twitter would be a good one if you are uh, if you're taking votes. Yes, I am uh, going to be doing Twitter eventually, but it, uh, I'll be uh, frank. That's the one that I use the least in my personal time, so that's my own personal bias. I've All always right. had the intention of doing that, but. I wanted to start off the uh, the SMS series with the ones that I had the most fun with because uh, social media is a great tool when it's used properly. And I wanted to focus on the ones that I enjoyed the most, whereas Facebook and Twitter are much bigger and they they have some pretty big drawbacks. But, thank, but it, in this particular series, I don't focus on like the bigger questions of like, what the platforms should or shouldn't be allowed to do. I'm just here to teach you how to use the things themselves and how to avoid the more problematic aspects, like making sure that uh, you attendees today knew about the difference between safe for work, not safe for work, and not safe for life. That was one of the key things I wanted to do. Great, thank you. Okay, okay, so we are at four minutes and five, uh, four minutes and five, four hours and five minutes of the p.m. So I am going to go ahead and conclude the meeting for this interaction. But I would like to thank all of you for taking the time to view this uh, presentation, whether it's here live in the meeting or live on YouTube or uploaded to YouTube, I should say. So thank you very much for uh, taking the time. I hope to see you uh, in some shape or capacity in the future with either whether it's in this series or any of the other programs that I offer for Dallas Public Library. And I hope that you have a good day and that you and your families uh, take uh, good care throughout this uh, upcoming holiday season. So as always, stay safe, healthy, and sane. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.